Welcome back. Uh, well, you're still tuned into Chartbusters on CNBC TV 18. It's turning out to be a bit of a down day for the markets. So the Nifty is down around 158 points uh, at this point in time. And the Sensex also over 500 points knocked off on that particular index. But uh, let's discuss one particular stock on our radar today, PDS. The company is a supplier and manufacturer to over 190 fashion brands and retailers globally. Let's bring in the CEO of uh, the company, Sanjay Jain, to understand how the business is panning out given the current environment with rising inflation, recessionary fears looming, and the Russia-Ukraine war. Have supply chains taken a hit for the company? What's the impact on the top line and the overall business, especially margins? Mr. Jain, hi, welcome to the show. You know, uh, I was just reading a little bit about the company. Your sourcing segment, which is basically sourcing for all of these retail brands, fashion brands, is around 95% of your revenue. Can you explain to us briefly what the business model of the company is and how are you managing such stupendous growth, which is, I think, over 40% in the span of one quarter? Yeah. Hi, Ekta. Morning. I think notwithstanding the recessionary trends across Europe and other parts, uh, we have actually grown 40% plus in the first quarter. And uh, sourcing as a service, uh, uh, in fact, is a new segment uh, that we have added very recently. But the main segment is design-led sourcing which is more than 90% of our top line uh, last year and continues to be so. In this segment, uh, we work with leading retailers and uh, we have our own design that we take it to them. And from design to sampling to actually getting orders and sourcing from our 600 plus partner factories across the globe is the nature of the business that we perform under this segment. So it's basically for all global leading retailers end-to-end -end from a design stage to actually getting the goods manufactured and then getting it delivered is the service that we perform to these customers. Take that point, uh, Sanjay. Thank you for, uh, you know, explaining the business. And from what we understand, uh, you know, all the jargon of uh, sourcing as a service, etc. aside, what you basically do is just connect brands to a bunch of uh, factories that you have for, and uh, while you help them design, etc. as well, you make a small little margin on uh, this transaction. Is that correct? If I'm, uh, uh, you know, getting it... Uh, to the basics? No, Manglam, it's, it's, it's not uh, the correct representation of what we do. Actually, we bring in tremendous value to the retail uh, customer. You know, for example, a Primark or a Tesco, uh, you know, or a Next in UK, I would actually be engaged with them uh, six to nine months ahead of the season, bringing in the expected trends to them, therefore bringing in the designs to them and getting those designs approved, getting samples to them, and then actually taking the responsibility of getting them manufactured across my partner factories. I'm using the word responsibility, therefore getting that factory onboarded, making sure that there is ESG compliance, making sure that the entire working capital is managed. I act as a principal who takes the responsibility of getting manufactured, buying them, and then selling them on to retailers. So there is a lot of responsibility beyond just earning a commission over here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Jain, you know uh, what uh, Mangalam and I were discussing before the interview, in fact, are your margins because your gross margins are over 15 odd percent, but your operating margins come down to around 3.1 percent. And correct me if I'm wrong, in the previous quarter, you did have some monetization of land, which aided your overall numbers as well. Uh, so when, uh, why are your margins so wafer thin? And when do you expect a sustainable improvement? Because your revenue could be great but it's not filtering down into your operating margins. I think our business model is B2B, you know, wherein to expect us to go beyond a 5% uh, pat margin over the next two, three years, uh, you know, we won't be able to get there. But as a B2B company, maintaining a 15 to 17% gross margin, gradually augmenting it because of the new nature of the services that we're adding to our portfolio, Given the strong growth momentum, as a result, the operating leverage that I'm going to get, therefore, I should be able to uh, sustain a 4 to 5% PAT margin. But most importantly, what I should be just as, as a company is the return on capital employed that I'm generating for my stakeholders. PDS operates an asset light model and operate at 30% plus return on capital employed and generate strong fee cash flows with a net debt negative balance sheet. 
So notwithstanding a relatively low margin, I anticipate that there should be continuation of 30% plus return on capital employed in strong free cash flows from our company. Right. We take that point. Uh, you know, you are uh, uh, generating strong free cash flows. You are generating higher return on capital. Uh, could you then give us a sense of uh, what's the kind of revenue prognosis that you have for the next, say, uh, two to three years? And uh, secondly, what does that mean in terms of free cash flow to the firm? Because uh, you don't have uh, a lot of capital expenditure because you're asset light, etc. And what do you plan to do with that free cash flow? Because I mean, the last couple of uh, you know years, I'm looking at it. Your dividend payout isn't too high as well. Yeah. So uh, we had uh, anticipated, for example, in the current year, a 12 to 15 percent growth for the entire year, and at, in the first quarter, we have actually grown 40 percent plus. And given the strong uh, order traction, we anticipate a good growth momentum. But over a longer horizon, we expected from about 8,800 crore uh, last year, we would actually double up to about 18,000 crore over five years. That's kind of a mid-teens growth. And uh, we feel uh, we are well poised to get to that stage. Now, in terms of the investment, it may require for this addition of 9,000, you know, 9,000 last year to doubling up, a typical manufacturing unit might have to invest close to 2,000 to 3,000 crore as capex. Whereas in my case, given that I onboard factories through a careful selection process, my investment would be insignificant in terms of capex. And secondly, given we constantly endeavor to work through negative working capital or insignificant working capital, we anticipate that from my free cash flow, I may not be required to invest more than 10 to 20 percent of the free cash flow every year to achieve this growth momentum. Exactly. And, so that 80 percent comes back to shareholders as dividends? So the the board of directors uh, of the company last year endeavored uh, and year ended March 21 to adopt a dividend distribution policy of 25 percent of the profit to be paid out, which is what was followed last year. And for year ended March 22 as well, mm. the dividend payout has been more than 25 percent. I guess as the company keeps stabilizing generation of free cash flows, the management would recommend the board to consider appropriately. But for now, 25% payout is the uh, dividend policy adopted. And, and allow me to add one more point when I mentioned about the growth momentum. This is, this is primarily, as, as uh, Ekta said in the beginning, design-led sourcing giving us this growth. In the last six to nine months, our company has very, very carefully mm -hmm. added a new initiative of sourcing as a service. And I'm very pleased to inform you, in nine months of initiation, I have actually 8,000 crore mm -hmm. order book wherein the leading retailers like Haynes, Ralph Lauren, Sainsbury, uh, S. Oliver, and now mm -hmm. very recently we are engaged with a large sure. UK retailer. I have signed these kind of contracts for acting as an exclusive sourcing agent for them from various geographies in the eastern part of the world. Okay, so you'd be an exclusive sourcing agent. That's important to note. But uh, so you have these, uh, uh, you know, your plan is to eventually hit two and a half billion dollars in the next four to five years. Uh, how exactly are you going to achieve that, Mr. Jain? And tell us where are the margins going to be at that point in time? Revenue growth, revenue could be two and a half billion dollars, but at what margins would you be operating at? What is your profitability that we could expect? Yeah, so the the design-led sourcing business, given my engagement with close to 200 customers, uh, A, I would grow in line with them. Plus, I'm trying to get a larger share of wallet through new categories like home, uh, like accessories, and I've also increased my effort into new geographies, like U.S. is now 20% of my sales. It was 9% three years back. I've started uh, en entry into Australia as well. So new categories with existing customers, adding new customers, entering the new geographies, that is in the design-led sourcing, plus what I just mentioned, sourcing as a service. I think these two would be the right. building block. On top of it, the brand's business. You know, we have been selected as the exclusive licensee by Forever 21 and Sketchers Kids category for the Europe and, uh, you know, UK part of the world. So these are the brands led growth. So these are the building blocks, one, two, three. And now on the margins, uh, I think we anticipate because of the addition of new categories, because mm -hmm. of source the service being higher sure. uh, margin category brands, margins should expand. Uh, in terms of gross margin, 100 to 200 basis point. Okay. But you would see the more traction in the net income margin 
which I, I believe we anticipate them to scaling up to 5% net income to sales in about five years from now. Okay, just quickly, Mr. Jain, you have real estate uh, which you're looking to monetize further. Can you tell us if that's happening? How much is it worth? Quickly, if you could just be brief about it. Yes, we, we monetized last year a non-core asset. This year as well, uh, we are focused on a warehouse and uh, we are going to monetize it. Uh, in fact, uh, we have actually concluded the deal to monetize a warehouse. Uh, which is worth about uh, 6 million uh, pound and that's approximately 50 odd crores and we monetize it at a good profit as compared to the book value. That deal is concluded on non-core asset monetization. It's interesting because you know you don't need any capex and on top of that you're monetizing a lot of uh, the assets that you have and uh, a lot of it still hasn't found its way to shareholders. You're saying 25% of your profits go back to shareholders as dividends. Be that as it may, uh, talking about shareholders itself, I'm looking at your shareholding pattern. Um, Institutions don't hold any uh, stake in your company, any significant stake. We just have a couple of FPI entities holding about two, two and a half percent. But you are, uh, you know, uploading uh, uh, presentations on the exchanges. You are holding conference calls, etc. Is that an effort to uh, get institutions on board? Have you been speaking to them? And can we hear of any institutions, uh, uh, you know, uh, participating in your story as you are promising? What's the USP for an investor to come in? I think uh, Mangla, my job is to uh, deliver uh, the business plan or the expectation our stakeholders frame from us. That is first responsibility. Second is to communicate this effectively in as much as possible to our stakeholders. That is what the management has been trying to do. And we have we have adopted a more effective communication last few quarters. And I think some of the research houses also have initiated coverage on the stock. So I guess uh, allow us to uh, keep delivering on the performance, keep communicating. And I think it's a matter of time that institutions would also notice what we are doing. So hopefully it should lead to its own logical consequence. Okay, take that point. Thanks a lot for joining in, uh, giving us uh, all those details on the business. So uh, hope to speak to you more often and perhaps get some more out of you on uh, what the plans for the U.S. business. And Europe in the near term are as well because UK and Europe account for nearly three quarters of your revenue. And we are seeing some macro challenges there. With that, we take a short break, come back. On the other side, we get you more on the markets and individual stocks.